The difference between the resin and kit parts can be extreme in some cases. However, with some of the new release kits, they may not necessarily warrant the additional expense. It should be noted that there are generally two types of resin on the market. One is a yellow creamy colour, and this is generally of the older generation of resin kits. The second is of a grey colour, and is favoured by both Edouard and Ares. Resin can be quite easy to paint, and can have intricate detail, cockpits with their various knobs and dials, or wheel wells with bundles of wires crisscrossing the various hydraulic pumps and valves. When painting resin, the method you use to apply the undercoat is very important. Be sure to use a thin mixture and to apply with an airbrush rather than to use a spray can undercoat. This is to ensure that the detail inherent in the resin doesn't get lost due to paint pooling in the recesses. The same principle also applies to the base colours, and if you choose to hand paint these, ensure that you apply the paint in multiple thin coats. Usually, at this point, you would paint all the fine detail in the cockpit. Use a fine brush and ensure that you do not load too much paint on the brush. It is easier to add more paint onto the subject than to remove it.
A coat of matte varnish is now applied to seal everything in. The resin is first painted with the base colours and a basic ink wash applied. Then the photo etch is added and once it's all in place, a varnish is sprayed with the same weathering process then applied as before. The seat is one of the main features that is most visible when people examine a completed cockpit within a plane. This is especially the case if you display the model with a canopy open, which is highly recommended if you are pleased with all your efforts inside the cockpit. If you opt not to get a cockpit upgrade set, you may still wish to consider upgrading the seat. There are two main options you have to go about doing this. You can purchase a resin seat with moulded seat belts, which is then painted using a fine brush, about a 5-0 or more. This is actually easier than it may look due to the differences in height of the belts vis-a-vis -vis the other chair components. This greatly assists in the accuracy of the paintwork. All the various base colours are now applied.
The next step is to apply an ink wash, and as before, a varnish is applied to protect the paint underneath. Again, the excess is removed using a cotton bud dipped in the appropriate thinner. This option allows for the most effective weathering to be applied due to the solid nature of the harnesses and chair components. Dust pigments may also be applied for further enhancement. The SU25 seat is predominantly black. This can be a difficult colour to work with, as one can easily overdo any weathering and lose the blackness. Initially, it is necessary to give the background colour some modulation, as well as to pick out some of the detail. This is done by using grey washes. Once you are happy with the outcome, then add some browns to dirty it up. Remember to do this by choosing various spots where you would expect dirt to build up. Rolling sets are available and are a worthwhile addition to your bench if you use a lot of photo etch parts. They allow you to make smooth curves in the parts and remove a great deal of the difficulty. The other option is to get a resin base chair with no belts or using the kit seat and adding belts to it. Belts come in three main variants regular photo etch, which needs to be painted. This is completely obsolete in my opinion, as for a few extra dollars, you can go for the second option, which is the pre-painted color photo etch seat build sets. Because the seat itself is very crisp and highly detailed, not all the photo etch components are used. The third option is to get the fabric seat belt sets. These have only just become more widespread in the past few years and are only available on a selection of aircraft, but achieve the best results in terms of realism and are a little easier to install than their photo etch counterparts due to the greater flexibility in material. Once this is complete, the seat belts can be added. The whole assembly is treated with a matte varnish 
and then a dash of pigments to add some dust. As mentioned earlier, photo etch seat belts are a great way to boost the wow factor of a cockpit. They can, however, be somewhat tricky to assemble, as a great deal of threading is usually required. This is best done using two tweezers, with a lot of the bending being done through holding them in the two spots and manoeuvring the belt. Do not be overly concerned with the amount of bending and twisting required, and any subsequent deformities in the belt as this is actually a bonus, as it adds irregularities to the final outcome. Just be careful to minimise the amount of times you need to repeat the same bend, as the metal may snap due to fatigue. Be sure to be patient and in a calm mood when attempting to work on any of the more complex photo etched components. When attaching the belts to the seat, first super glue the appropriate end to their respective anchor position. Allow the glue to set properly, even giving it an hour to be sure. Then proceed to bend the belts into the desired position, usually neatly laid into the middle of the seat. If you're after a quick and easy way to enhance the standard of your model, then photo etch is the way to go. Many models contain at least a small amount of photo etch. However, the real value comes from the colour sets. It should also be noted that these sets can be significantly cheaper than the resin counterpart. Place the photo etch sheet on a hard surface, preferably on a cutting mat. This will prevent the sheet from bending and potentially deforming other parts. It can of course be corrected, but some parts look better if in mint condition. It is important when cutting out the photo etch parts that you try and place the blade as close to the part which is to be removed. If there is a stub of excess material remaining on the part, then this should be either cut away or filed back with a diamond tipped file. Be aware that a blade will blunt quickly and it's worthwhile to use two or three blades to remove the parts from a typical 132 scale set. When bending large photo etched parts, you may choose to either use tweezers or your fingers, depending on your preference. Due to the fold lines put into the parts, this can be quick and easy. Owning a pair of good precision tweezers to assist in the placement of the parts is highly recommended, and a second pair is worthwhile in some situations.
When gluing photo etch parts, super glue should be used. When bending small parts, bending machines are available and are highly recommended as these allow you to clamp the parts down and bend with precision without distorting any other sections of the part. That's all for this episode of Scale Model Cinema. I hope you enjoyed it and will join us again in the future. Cheers.